talk about Angela Rayner because um, we've spoken about this for quite a while now. Um, Hypocrite Rayner's £48,000 profit on her council house sale. That's the front page of today's Mail on Sunday. They're uh, talking about the revelations from a book which is being released, which is an unofficial biography of Angela Rayner. And what it's outlining is that she made a £48,500 profit on her ex-council house thanks to her buying it at a discount on the right to buy policy. It's a policy that now, if Labour get into government, she wants to reform. Critics are saying that she wants to pull up the ladder and make it harder for other social housing tenants to benefit in the same way that she did, especially as she's now Shadow Housing Secretary. Um, of course, right to buy, you'll remember, is the um, was the oh, that was brilliant. Uh, wasn't yeah, it? The Margaret Thatcher's. Thatcher policy, mm. uh, which has continued, where if you've lived in a council house for a certain amount of time, you can buy it at a discount from the council and therefore become a homeowner. It's Lord Ashcroft that has made these statements, uh, has uncovered this in his book. Um, also, there was some strange uh, goings on as well regarding. Uh, she bought her council house with a £26,000 discount, but she was then registered on the electoral roll there from 2005 to 2015, though in 2010 she married someone and they were listed at two different addresses for that time. She gave her address as the original council house. Oh. His, her husband gave an address a, a, a mile away. Um, she re-registered her children's births, giving her address as the address of her new husband and her brother was listed at the original council house from 2010 to 2014 but locals say that he um he, uh, locals say that he did live there um, but then she sold it in march 2015 and then um, made this profit from it you see that i think that's all a bit yeah, murky it's very it's very <laughs> murky um the thing as well is that i think if I remember correctly, once you had bought this, you had to live there for a certain for, amount of time before you could sell it. So you couldn't flip it. You couldn't do a quick turnover. So maybe it was that to satisfy the number of years that you had to be there. Yeah. And that would have been, what, eight years afterwards. So maybe it was five years. I don't know how long. I can't remember. She was a tenant in the Victorian house when she exercised her right to buy from the council in January 2007 took out a mortgage to pay £79,000 for the two-bedroom property, having been given a £26,000 discount on its market value uh, of one quarter, and then she sold it in March 2015. Um, and that was seven weeks later she became an MP, winning the Ashton under Lyme seat. Um, I don't know how she wants to reform right to buy, but Labour obviously opposed the policy, um, presumably that's something that she would perhaps have to revisit. Um, but now, uh, the Mail on Sunday asked Ms Rayner a series of detailed questions. She only got a reply, they only got a reply from a Labour spokesperson. Um, whilst Belize-based Tory billionaire Lord Ashcroft kicks out at those who graft to get on in life, Lord Ashcroft being the mm -hmm. author, Labour supports the principle that if you live in a council house and work hard, you should have the opportunity to own your own home but we have committed to reviewing the unfair discounts introduced by the Conservatives in 2012, but Angela's purchase long predates that and was done by the book. So, um, interesting that they're saying that they're going to review the discounts, but if they review the discount to be anything lower than 25%, that will be hypocrisy from them, right? Because mm. she got a 25% discount. Yep. But what uh, does it matter? I mean, I, really, she she was doing. I mean, it is murky. The whole thing. Why was she having different addresses, and her husband's and her brother was there and all the rest of it. But that aside, completely that aside, just just say it was just a clean thing. That she did the right to buy. What would be the hypocrisy I, of I, doing I, a I right to buy now I, at a different dis, at a different discount? I, I I because of the fact that she would have enjoyed a discount that she would then. Um, not allow others to enjoy. Mm. That's the hypocrisy. If if she says, I'm not going to change the right to buy policy and a 25% discount is fine, then great. There is no hypocrisy, it's a non-story. 
if she presides as housing minister over a discount being reduced from 25% for, for right to buy, then she has benefited from a policy that she is then... Yeah, Changing but that was then and this is now. I think I think we're being too harsh. I can't bear the woman either. That's not one like a person I can't bear. <laughs> You're defending a lot of people who can't bear. <laughs> I know. Too. Honestly, because the worse, worse the older I get, the more I, the grumpy I'm getting. I'm a grumpy old woman. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so you don't mind this? You don't think this is a big story? No, not really. I don't. I just think that was then, this is now. And actually, to reintroduce it would be absolutely brilliant because people do need that. that all these other schemes that they've tried where it's a shared purchase... Um, where you own and then your payment over time um, contributes to your eventual ownership. It doesn't work. It hasn't worked. This was a very good scheme in actual fact. Do you know what would be really good? Is to get tax relief on mortgages to bring that back. Oh, what you mean for landlords? For everyone, any mortgage, any mortgage um, holder. Because well, you, you know that if you're a landlord now... Um, you don't get any tax relief on the mortgage that you pay. You, you, so you, if you rent That's out right. a house for £20,000 a year and mm. you pay £15,000 Oh, and you don't get it for repairs that, either because it's it's seen as not maintenance but an improvement yeah, because it's, it's they, they've, a, they've completely, an ongoing asset. And what it's doing is it's, it's making hard. landlords leave the market, yeah. which is therefore putting up rents, which is therefore making it worse for tenants. And exactly. It's, 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 it's really, really it. backfired, hasn't it? So no, stupid. I'm saying for any person that's taking out a mortgage, anyone... For whatever reason, whether you're a landlord yeah. or not, but sort of you like get tax tip- relief on it. Yeah, I you think don't we pay should. tax on that on that uh, on that portion of your income that goes towards the mortgage. Exactly, which is how it used to be years and wow. years and years I ago. I can't even imagine it being like that. It was. It was brilliant. Um, it is. It is an absolute nightmare the way in which they are um, creating a situation where. Um, landlords are exiting the market there isn't enough housing stock and they think they're solving the problem and all they need to do is build more houses no now i have to say this is where every because this is the every single day i hear that about three times a day and i'm i'm screaming at everybody and now i'm kind of like screaming quietly out loud at you why because no we don't have enough land we have to preserve the land that we've got. They're trying to put through a, a building of 2,300, it's just gone under, well, just under 2,000 houses now, on Greenbelt, near where we live. It is farmland, it is fertile farmland. That is considered where we are, and also it's the wildlife. But why got... do you have to build on the farmland? Why can't you build exactly, on Brownfield? Why they, can't you rebuild? But, but they are, they, and they are building on Brownfield, which they shouldn't be doing either. They should be uh, utilising it. They should be repurposing office blocks because most of them are empty. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, or rebuild as well social housing to make it more because a lot of it is quite badly designed and you could make it more there densely are populated. Streets and streets. But, yes, exactly. But you would have to allow. What I find quite repellent about some of those is my council does that a lot, and there are lots of social housing blocks. And what they do is they say, right, you can't move back into them once we've once we've rebuilt them. You know, we're going to move you well, out. Well, you can't evict people. That's wrong. That's yeah, displacing. It's a, it's a beautiful, yes. beautiful low-rise estate. Um, I've got to be really quick because I've got to get to a break. But there's a beautiful low-rise estate in, in Brixton, um, not far from where I live, which is called Cressingham Gardens. And it was uh, commissioned actually by John Major when he was head of Lambeth Council. And it's a beautiful low-rise estate which um, has a mix of houses and flats. Um, it's got, but it, it, it doesn't interfere with the vista of Brockwell Park because mm. it actually hides behind all of the trees. Oh, that's nice, um, sympathetic, which it, they don't it, do it anymore. Beautiful, and what and it, and, and it was like hailed as an amazing architectural uh, masterpiece at the time. And Lambeth Council have allowed it to get into such a state of disrepair that now it's it's easier to rip it down. And what they want to do is build um, huge oh. blocks overlooking mm. the park. And they've told all the people that have lived in Creston Gardens for 50 years, we're moving you out, and by the way, you won't be able to come back in. Why people can't they the... be sitting tenants? Because I know somebody... Well, they are, they are, and it's been a yeah. big fight going on, but that's what a lot they, of councils yeah. are doing, and it's a nightmare. 